Hello, and welcome back to The Goodness Margin, the place where we find margin for the good things in life. Today, we're going to be talking about our new spring clean challenge. Spring is almost here. It's starting to get warm outside. And one of the first things that so many of us think of is spring cleaning. We love to have this time of year for a reset for our home. I've done spring cleaning a variety of ways. Sometimes I don't spring clean at all because that year I've been able to systematically clean my home, which is something I definitely prefer. However, this last year has been really crazy and I know that my house could use a reset and so many of you have asked about spring cleaning. So here are some tips and here is a way that you can spring clean your house in one month. Now, for the week leading up to our Spring Clean Challenge, we want to take the time to do a few things. First of all, we want to gather our supplies. You need some microfiber cleaning cloths. I have found that these are the absolute best tool for getting dirt and dust out of my home. And so if you don't have microfiber cleaning cloths, I will link it below. In fact, I will be linking in the notes below everything that I suggest to you in this video, also including a guide for you to click on in the blog post. You can click on a guide that you can download. You can save it on your phone or you can even print it out to have available so you can go through this systematically. We are going to use Dr. Bronner Sal Suds. I find that this is a really good cleaning soap, but it's also not a toxic material and it's very inexpensive. You just need a drop. It's very concentrated. If you just put one squirt in a sink full of hot water, you have the perfect combination for you to clean your doors, your baseboards, your walls, your cabinets, all of those things. Another thing that I suggest that you have is an extendable duster. This way you can easily clean your ceiling fans, your vents, the corners of your ceiling, rather than having to grab a stepladder or anything like that, you can easily clean these spaces with an extendable duster. And then when we're in the kitchen and we're deep cleaning our appliances, we will be using some distilled vinegar and some baking soda, but you probably already have that on hand. So the second thing we're gonna do to get prepared is we're gonna do a quick declutter of our home. If your surfaces are clean, if you've already taken care of a lot of the stuff, then it makes it so much easier to get to what you need to clean. So decide amount of time that you may have. If you have 30 minutes, that would be really great to grab a bag, grab a box, and quickly move through your home and just grab everything that you want to get rid of. But while you're doing this quick declutter, it's also really important that you determine right now what you're going to do with all of the stuff that you're going to get rid of during this spring cleaning process. Go ahead and pick a place that you're gonna donate to. Find out what time these donation centers are open and make a plan that you will take that bag, put it in the back of your car and take it immediately to the donation center. And the third thing we want to do is be sure that we keep the dirt outside. It doesn't matter if we really deep clean our floors and our carpets and we're continually tracking dirt in. So look at all the doors. Where are the places that people enter from your home? For us, it's our front door and our garage. So at our garage door, I'm going to take the time to blow out those leaves. And also, it's been a really long time since I've replaced the rug where we wipe our feet there at that door. I have a rug outside and a rug inside all of my doors. And so take the time if you need to and replace those rugs. For my front porch, I really, really need to pressure wash that. And then also I need to replace the rug. So go ahead and take the time to clean those outside spaces and that way you're not tracking dirt from the outside into your freshly cleaned home. So now we're gonna get started. One of the most important things for you to remember is anytime that we deep clean a space, we wanna clean from the top to the bottom. It's really pointless if you take the time to use that attachment and vacuum your couch, and then right above your couch, you dust your ceiling fan and all of that dust falls on your freshly cleaned couch. So you wanna start at the top and move to the bottom in every one of these rooms. I have divided this into four weeks. I find that for myself, it's easy for me to have a goal for each week of this is the space that I am going to deep clean. You can do this however you want. You can divide it out into eight weeks or 12 weeks, or you could even decide that you are going to do this in two days, that you're gonna deep clean your entire home. So however you decide to do this, this is just a map for you to follow. Now, within each week, I've divided it into five days. So we have five weekdays. We can do catch up on the weekend. Some of these weeks, my schedule is going to be a little bit different. I may decide to try to hit everything in one day, 
or I may divide it up throughout the entire week. So do whatever works best for you and skip the parts that you don't need and maybe some of the days you're gonna need a little bit more time. Remember, this is just a template for you to follow to help you with the spring clean challenge. And don't forget that we're doing this also on Instagram, so be sure to follow me on Instagram and watch my stories as I spring clean my home as well. Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, click the bell, you'll be notified when the next video goes live. There are a lot of videos on how we can clean different parts of our home on this YouTube channel. Day one, we're gonna start from the top to the bottom. We're gonna hit our ceilings, our vents, our light fixtures, and then we're gonna move to our blinds, our windows, and all the way down to our baseboards. We're gonna take care of those things on day one. All that you need is a sink of hot water with a squirt of that Dr. Bronner soap. Use a microfiber cloth. You can change the water out, rinse the rag as frequently as you need to. You wanna be sure to dust those spaces with those dusters before you wipe them down or use a vacuum with an attachment to vacuum off the dust. You just start with wiping it with a damp rag. All you're gonna be doing is moving that dirt along rather than really picking it up and taking it away from the space. Day two, we're gonna hit inside our cabinets. So we're gonna open up our cabinets. We're gonna take everything out. We're gonna wipe those cabinets out and put the stuff back. This is a great time to really evaluate what's inside the cabinet. Is this something that I need to keep? You've already taken it out. So as you're putting stuff in, really start to think about that. On day three, we're doing the outside of our cabinets and we're also gonna do the furniture. So for me, that would be this table and these chairs. I'm going to wipe off the outside of my cabinets and I'm also gonna wipe down the furniture really good. In our kitchen, there are so many times that we spill things that we don't even see where we've spilled them. And so this is something that's really needed to keep our kitchen clean and sanitary. Day four is our appliances. Now with the appliances, this can really be done throughout the week because some of these take a long time. For example, I have double ovens and thankfully they have a self-clean option. If you have that self-clean option, I highly recommend that you use it. A few notes of caution, if you've never done this before, know that it will smell like something is on fire because what happens is that oven heats up as hot as it possibly can go. In fact, it's going to lock because if you opened it, you could really hurt yourself with the heat that's inside of that. My oven takes three hours, each oven individually. And so after three hours, I'm gonna let it cool off and then open it up. And inside, rather than it still being dirty, all of a sudden it's clean, but there are literally ashes at the bottom where it has just burnt that, those baked on things, it has burnt those off. So then you can just go in with that microfiber cloth. Really, you just need it to be damp with a little bit of water and wipe it right out. So this takes three hours. For me, it takes six hours because of two ovens. So this is easily something that you can do throughout while you're working on another day. You may even have a Zoom call and you can pop that on. And in three hours, your oven is gonna be clean. The same thing with your dishwasher. The way that I deep clean my dishwasher is first, I'm going to do a cup of white distilled vinegar in an empty dishwasher. I'm gonna sit it inside of the top of that dishwasher, sit it on that top rack, just sit it upright, I'm going to close it and I'm going to run my dishwasher on a quick cycle. And what that's going to do is that's going to start that sanitation process. Then I'm going to open up my dishwasher and I'm going to get the filter out. I'm going to clean that filter really good. It's been a while. You may need to scrub it some. If you do this regularly, all you need to do is just rinse that out, put that filter back in. And then I'm going to take a cup of baking soda. I'm going to sprinkle that on the bottom of my dishwasher and I'm going to run my dishwasher through a hot cycle. Um, for me, this is the pots and pan cycle. This is the most extensive cycle that I have in my dishwasher. And then after that, you're gonna open it up and wipe around the seal of your dishwasher. So you can see the time spent actually cleaning your dishwasher is not very long, but the time that you're waiting on that three hour cycle, that is a long time. So go ahead and plan to clean your appliances throughout the week. During this day, you can focus on things like your refrigerator and your microwave really taking stuff out, wiping those down really good if you need to, taking some of those trays out and cleaning those in your sink. And then last but not least, day number five in our kitchen is gonna be our pantry and food storage. You want to vacuum your pantry out really good. You wanna take stuff off of the shelves and wipe those down. Sometimes if we, especially if we have wire shelving, those can get really dirty and they're a little bit hard to clean. So you wanna get a soapy rag and wipe those really well. Go ahead and check the dates on your items. If you have something that's expired and you know that it really is expired, go ahead and let it go. 
but maybe you have something that's getting close to expiring and you know you need to use it quickly, plan that into next week's meal plan. But if you have some food items that are unopened and you're not going to use those, maybe it was something you thought your kids would like and they don't, especially canned goods or closed up bags, take those to your closest food pantry and go ahead and donate those and get those out of your kitchen. For week number two, we're going to go into our living room. This is not just your living room, but this is also all of the common areas of your home. Everybody's house is a little bit different. So for me, that's going to be that front, which is probably called the formal living room. We use it as a library. And then instead of a dining room, we have a study or an office. So these are those common areas that we share in our home. We're going to focus on those this week. Day one, we're starting at the top. We're doing our ceilings, our light fixtures, our vents, our ceiling fans, all of that. You're going to see a lot of this repeats, and so we don't need to go into detail, but you're going to start there at the top of this space. Day number two is our furniture for your chairs and your couch and all of those things. You want to take those cushions off and use that attachment on your vacuum cleaner and really vacuum those really well. You'll be surprised the things that you find if it's been a while since you've moved your couch cushions. And if you have some furniture that isn't fabric, that it is um, hard furniture, you're going to really want to dust those and then wipe those down really good. Flip those coffee tables over and get that dust that's built up underneath. Sometimes you may find some cobwebs, so you want to really, really clean those spaces. If your pillowcases or your pillows are washable, go ahead and take the time to freshen those up as well. Day number three is going to be our baseboards, our doors. If you have a fireplace, you're going to just wipe down those wooden things on the wall. Maybe you have some built-in shelves. Take the time to clear those. And then the next day, you're going to focus. If you have stairs, focus on your stairs. And you're also going to be focused on your flooring. So if you need to um, spend some special time taking care of some carpet stains or washing those rugs, whatever that is, Take care of that on this day. Day number five is going to be our storage spaces. If you have storage spaces in those common areas of your home, you're going to want to wipe those down, take the stuff out, check that, reorganize it, um, clean those spaces out. And now we're done with the living room in our common areas. For week number three, it's our bedrooms. And this zone really varies so much in everyone's home. And each room varies in how much time it's going to take you to clean that room. So I've divided this into three different categories and you can choose the way that you wanna do it. You can either do a category each day or you can choose a room to do each day. And if you have kids and you're gonna clean their room, I highly recommend that you get them involved. Kids are great at dusting and cleaning baseboards. But one example of this is to clean my bedroom where I really have zero clutter in my bedroom. I don't store anything in my bedroom. And cleaning my guest room is the same way. It's going to be a really quick, easy thing versus cleaning my kids' rooms where that they do have a lot of stuff in their bedroom. It's going to take more time to do that. So just keep that in mind as you move through this. So the first category in this zone is going to be our ceilings, your walls, your windows, your light fixtures, your ceiling fans, and then moving down to your baseboards. That's going to be that first day. It's just a lot of somewhat monotonous, but necessary cleaning. The second day we're gonna, or the second zone, category, whatever you wanna think of it as, we're gonna focus on our furniture and our bedding. So you're gonna be sure to wipe your furniture down really good. Um, take all of the bedding off and wash that. Don't forget to start this early in the day. You definitely don't wanna start washing all of your bedding at night because it can tell you that most of your comforters or your thicker quilts or blankets are gonna take a few times in the dryer. And then what I found for my comforter is I typically try to wash it first thing in the morning. I run it through at least one cycle in the dryer, and then I lay it out to air dry for the rest of the day. Sometimes that takes a full day for that to completely dry. Sometimes I'll throw it back in the dryer to kind of freshen it up again, but be sure you start this early in the day so you don't get to bedtime and have no bedding on your beds. And then that third category in the zone is our closets. This is not maybe the time for you to completely minimize and clean out your closet. If you haven't done that, that's definitely going to take a lot of time. But I would encourage you to organize your closet to go in and kind of look and see what immediately stands out to you that you might can quickly get rid of and create the best zones, especially if you have kids. Kids are growing. Kids are changing. I've already been thinking about it. And I recently cleaned out my daughter's closet. But I need to change some things up, and that was only a month ago. It's amazing how quickly they grow and they change. And so for this time, I'm going to just do a quick refresh in her closet, but I'm also going to take the time to take the baskets down, do all of that, and to be sure to wipe those out to clean that closet really good. 
For week four, the last category is our bathrooms. Our bathrooms really take a beating. We have hot showers and all of that steam gets in there and it causes that dust to really start to stick. We use hair products, especially if you use aerosol hairspray. And so bathrooms are a place that really need a lot of cleaning. Day number one, we're gonna do our ceilings. We're gonna do our windows. We're gonna do the doors the light fixtures, the vents, and then all the way down to the baseboards. That's what we're going to focus on for day one in our bathrooms. Day two is the inside of our cabinets, our bathroom storage. Don't forget that toiletries do expire and most of your toiletries are expired if they're a year old. So if they're a year old, you need to let them go. This is a great time to just, as you're taking everything out, start to evaluate what you have. Maybe you have too much of one product. Um, this is a time to maybe look at your backstop to see if you need to order something. If you um, are running out of an item, you're going to want to wipe all that out and put it back in neatly. For the third day, we're going to focus on the outside of the cabinets and any furniture that you have in the bathroom. Wipe those down really well. You can see that this is probably going to be an easier day. So if there's another day that's taken a little bit of more time, then you can move that into this day as well. On day number four, we're gonna deep clean our sinks, our toilets, our tubs, especially if you have a jet tub, you wanna run that deep clean cycle through that. Do not use regular soap or your bathroom will be completely full of suds. You can follow me on Instagram and I'll show you my tips, but one of the things that I do in my tub, it's not recommended that you use bleach because I can really start to wear down those tubes inside of a jet tub but I use dish washing as far as for your dishwasher because that way it's not going to sud up. Um, even if you have those little tablets, you can put them in a cup of boiling water, drop them in there, they'll dissolve, and then pour that in a full tub of hot water and run that through a few times. It, then you can run a cycle of just clean water or vinegar to rinse that out. So we're going to use a scrub brush to really get in the corners of the shower and all of those things. We're going to really deep clean those on this day. And then the last day, we're going to be focusing on the walls and the floors. Again, the dust seems to really stick in the bathroom because we're taking hot showers and we have all of that steam. And so you want to be certain that you're getting all of that off of your walls and all of that off of your floors. You're likely going to need a little bit of a scrub brush to kind of go in the corners there. A great tool to use is if you go to the dentist and they give you a toothbrush that you're not going to use on a regular basis. Grab that toothbrush and use that to get in those corners in your bathroom. So now your house is really sparkling clean and you'll find that if you clean it on a regular basis. It makes it really easy to keep your house clean. That it'll stay really clean because you have taken the time to do this deep clean on your home. This would be a great time for you to share this video with someone. It's so fun to do some deep cleaning whenever that you're doing it with a friend. You can encourage each other and do it together. I truly believe that having a really sparkling clean home will add margin to your life for the good things.